Craig, can I tell you a super quick story? Absolutely. I was online the other day and I made this incredible post that got hundreds of thousands of views and it was one of your turning centers that obviously is a successful turning center and they took one of their turrets and just loaded it up with tools and we're talking, if this thing, and I don't know, I'd have to look at the post again, but if this thing had 12 stations in it, it eventually had 40 stations on it because there was so much. And one comment on that post that stood out to me that was very important was, at that point, why not switch to a mill turn? Why not just go that route? So I would love to talk to you today about a mill turn, about the B-axis head and the capabilities that this style of machine can bring to the audience watching. Well, that's a really valid idea and a really valid point. So the nice thing about a turret is its turning capability. You know, it does have live tooling capability, but it's primarily a turning part of the machine. So when we look at live tooling, we look at a shorter duration of use. Whereas when we look at a full-blown spindle, we have, just like in a regular mill, you're looking at hours and hours of duty cycle on that spindle. So you look at a live tool, you wanna to run it for a few minutes and shut it off, let it cool down a little bit, go back into a turning operation and move on again from there. So with something like a B-axis, we are gaining that ability of a milling spindle to do both milling and turning operations. You just unlocked a key memory for me, actually, Craig, is back when I was running the turning centers and we were machining jewelry, gold, platinum, silver, we did have to do that. I was burning through brushes trying to run my live tooling longer oh, than they should have been run. And that was expensive and time and maintenance that went down. That's a really valid point. Let's talk about it from the switching from a milling center now because it has turning applications as well, being that it has a spindle and a second spindle and right. a turret on the bottom side as well, right? So if I'm a milling guy, why would I switch to a mill turn in this situation? Right, and we've looked at parts where you would traditionally wanna put it in a mill and in a fixture. And we're like, well, how can we get this thing in the micro turn? And we're looking at fixture chucks. So we're looking at the capabilities of maybe sticking a boring bar in because the primary feature of the part is a center bore with a bunch of milling done around it. And we want to get that bore in in a turning fashion because it's faster and it's more accurate and it's less maintenance than dealing with a boring head. Whereas all of that milling work is still a lot of spindle time for a mill. So, so therefore we want to get that in into an actual spindle where we get the accuracy, the location, the angular control, you know, all of that capability that we get out of a mill. And I can simultaneously run both of those on the same, the OP10 and OP20 if I wanted to, is that correct? Absolutely. So with our micro turn here, you know, using, using this machine with the turret down the bottom and the movable spindles, we can bring two spindles down into contact on the same tool block at the same time or we can have one spindle on the turret and we can have another one either up on the gang plate or up on the B-axis doing some milling operations or maybe some other turning operations that aren't you know, conducive to the timing that is happening on the turret. That makes sense to me. And I have another question, maybe the last question, we'll see. My, my brain branches out all the time when you say something, I wanna learn more. But in the world of flexibility, if I come from the milling world, oftentimes I'm using maybe a quick change chuck of some sort, a quick change vise, you know, that, that allows me to switch out parts quickly. And if I'm in the turning world, a lot of times I think maybe I got a long change over time if I'm going from a round stock to some unique form of stock but we have great partners in this industry. I know one of oh, your absolutely. great partners is Hindbook, and they can do changeover to microns in a matter of seconds, if not seconds, right around a minute. And that allows for flexibility of all different sizes of parts as well, doesn't it? A absolutely it does. And we were just looking at a project with them that we were going from a collet to a mandrel and in doing that in the same chuck. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. So that allows, so that answers the question of the flexibility that goes along with maybe be feeling like I was trapped. You know, if I'm on a turning center, I know what a bar feed can do for me. If I'm on a milling center, I know what a quick change zero point system can do for me. Yep. This is truly the best of both worlds. That's kind of what we're saying, right? It, it really is. And we can go from either uh, using a collet like we're using here with Heimbu as your example, 
or we can go to like a three jaw or a two jaw or a four jaw chuck or even a even a chuck that is capable of two or three jaw configurations where we can grip something off center, do the primary operation and use that part of the part to align for secondary operation. You know, between the uh, different types of work holding that we can work with and how we can diversify that across from the main spindle to the sub spindle operations, um, it really uh, it really adds functionality to the mill term and, and it adds variation to it. So we can do parts in a mill turn that we thought we would originally do in a mill. And, and now we're, we're completing the part, you know, absolutely instead of running it through a different machine and then running it into a mill. Well, the last thing I want to talk about, and I know we're talking for a while now, but I love learning from you, Craig. So thank you, first of all, for spending time with me. Is this, let's touch on automation real quick. We see it doing its thing out here, yep. right? Now we've more or less perfected the art of mill turn. We're now doing turning and milling. We're now able to adapt multiple parts. We're now able to run through nights and weekends if the jobs allow it. Plus also, again, using the word flexibility, short runs if necessary, because if I'm looking at this correctly, you have different drawer stacks and those drawer stacks, we have different jobs in them to go. So we really are getting, I mean, not my stretching. I mean, oh gosh, my back is sore standing on this floor, but the machine's flexibility is really key. Yeah, absolutely. And with robotics, robotics has so much capability. You can, you can change out fixtures with robotics. You know, you can change out parts with robotics. Uh, you can clean out machines with robotics. You know, all of these different capabilities. We could go from one drawer of part number XYZ to the next drawer of part number XXX, you know, to the second part of, you know, ABC, you know, just something different, same sort of similar configuration. Uh, with automation, we can change out jaws on the fly. We can change out grippers on the fly. You know, all of that stuff can happen. The robot can queue up the machine programs, you know, change all of the work positions, everything. Automation so, is key. Yep. And I recently learned from my friends at Phoenix, since we have that robot behind us, we've added to four Ds now. Let the robots do your dull, your dirty, your dangerous, and your delicate. So the four Ds now for automation, Craig, I really could spend another hour talking with you. I hope you would watch. Would, would you watch for another hour? Maybe you would. <laughs> Leave it in the comments, Craig. Thank you so much, yep. brother. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you for your time.